where they propose a structure and we find something completely different. Yeah, so we, we wouldn't really have to have prior knowledge. Minerals, if they're not collected on Mars or uh, out of intergalactic uh, dust, um, we, we kind of know what we have, yeah? So in the natural environment. So often what we get is samples here where we have a composite of, say, we have a soil from Arizona 
and we have 10 components in there, then we would just search and match by a powder pattern, which is many, many little crystals. Let me get a sound that should be out. So we wouldn't have a single crystal, but rather a powder, which is also single crystalline. These are tiny little crystallites also, so it's not amorphous like a glass. Um, so and we would x-ray this, and since we have the crystal in all orientation, not just one single crystal like here, we get rather this kind of a pattern. Now this pattern <laughs> is, is not the prettiest one that we have ever seen, because these are actually nanoparticles with some crystalline phase in there. So that just tells you here, because of the very broad peaks, the smaller the crystalline size gets, is the broader the peak gets. So we have, uh, actually this is for new materials research here, for battery research. We have platinum, palladium uh, uh, nanoparticles here with some iron crystalline phase there. So we have a three component uh, uh, mixture here. So and this, is, this instrument also consists of a X-ray tube, just like over there, and the center sample stage, and the detector, which is not an area detector like here. This area detector over there is just like what you have in your camera. As a matter of fact, this here is a silicon strip detector. So it's, it's a one-dimensional, not a two-dimensional detector. So this is what we're doing here. And we have some uh, web applications that I can show you. And before we're just here is a penny and a little crystalline material uh, that we're looking at. We can go to very small sizes. What scatters are the electrons. Unlike, for instance, if you go to neutron diffraction, would be the nuclear scattering. So the heavier the element, if we have metals in there, the smaller the crystal can be that we can investigate. So let's go out there. It's accessible to anybody who wants to look at it. And we have a bunch of projects mentioned here. That's because I showed you just now the crystal size. If we have crystal sizes that are much smaller than what you saw, we can go to synchrotrons, to national lab facilities mm -hmm. where the radiation is 10,000 times magnitude higher. So we can go to crystals that you literally can't see when you're mounting them, right? Um, but what I wanted to show you here is our outreach area, um, and that is uh, our educational modules here. So if you wanted to learn more about crystallography, Reciprocal Net is something that is programmed out of this cool. lab and has mm -hmm. a bunch of members, actually the member sites I can show you here, this is the partner sites. Um, so we are the mother site and then there are the Lounge University like um, MIT is there, or also a uh, Canadian McMaster, and we have one down under. So, but if you want to go to learn about, you can uh, go, for example, here. If you have uh, children or a tiny brother, then you can play with him chemistry and go, for example, into the kitchen, figure out the structure of things in the fridge. Say, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving okay. is coming mm -hmm. up, let's look at tryptophan. And uh, we have a little Java applet here that allows you mm -hmm. to interrogate the molecule. There's some explanation here. And if you wanted to have more information, you can go to JAM2. That's a different Java applet where you can look at it in a different way. You can measure angles, distances. You can do ORTEP drawings. ORTEP drawings are ellipses rather mm -hmm. than spheres showing mm -hmm. the motion of the molecules. So you can do that. and. Um, then let's go back to here. There is also a little application on symmetry point groups, very important for our research. That's, you know, what we're looking at symmetry in, in a solid state. Um, and then this is a little quiz that we have programmed. But what I really would like to show you is the common molecules. This is a database that we programmed from, it has right now about 700 uh, structures that are in the literature that are common that you encounter every day, basically. Yeah? So if we want to, for instance, go to environmental molecules, you could look at um, what we think fits in there, like biomagnification, water crisis, etc. And then you can look, for example, at pesticides and cool. see what, what they look like. Yeah? Or uh, if you wanted to look at, uh, I think we have the Dirty Dozen, which is expanded right now uh, by the 
UN hopefully to include more of those persistent organic pollutants that mm -hmm. uh, geo travel into Arctic regions where they were never used. Like for instance, toxaphene is one of the molecules that has been heavily researched uh, in this university by SBA professor Ron Heitz. He looked at runoff uh, from cotton fields and has checked, you know, through the entire Mississippi and every, uh, uh, what's the fate of toxaphene and there is a little bit of write-up about this. So if you go to his web page, you find a lot uh, more on this, on this dirty dozen molecule, yeah, <laughs> and why we shouldn't be really using it. So 